What's up guys, it's Drake and spring has sprung. That's right, starting to get to warmer weather and warmer weather means soaker battles and soaker battles mean using the best. And uh, frankly, in a world where super soaker hasn't innovated in what feels like a decade, the best stuff in water, you know, blaster battles is coming out of Germany. And I've talked about that on multiple counts. I've gotten to talk about that with the Spira when it came out originally from its, you know, Kickstarter origins into its full on production launch. I think that it's an excellent product. And then they took everything about the Spira and made it even better with the Spira 2. Now, the one thing that both of those products have in common is that they are incredibly powerful, like water bullet type blasters. They're using a separate style of technology to propulse water using electronics, using charging, using an automatic filling system. They're very, very brilliant in their design. I've had the pleasure of playing with them in all sorts of circumstances in water battles, including where I probably shouldn't, I filled them with ocean water. They tend to be very resilient. Now that said, they're electronic water blasters, which has always been kind of confounding to me, but these guys did a really good job of sealing their internals and making something that's truly, truly resilient and special. That said, they're expensive. Anything with lithium batteries, anything with a compressor in it, anything like that is gonna be more uh, expensive than your traditional soaker-esque product, which tend to be, you know, $50 for a flagship, and all the way down to water pistol squirt guns that can be as low as like two, three bucks. So the category is very wide and then Spira sits at the very top of it at over $100 for the Spira 2, the actual Cadillac of water blasting. And this is a fascinating product because you would think that the next logical evolution would be the Spira 3, the even better electronic water pistol rifle blaster thing. But no, Germany has actually taken a step uh, and I don't even wanna say it's a step back, but it's a step sideways and they've created this it's the spira lx i think i'm one of the first people to get to review them particularly in the states i'm very excited to talk about it because this is a no batteries no charging product and you guys know from all of my gel bb products and reviews that uh i really like spontaneous play i like the ability to pick something up to know that it's ready to go and to play immediately when you know the impetus or the company or your friends show up or whatever it is where you're like it's time to blast your battle you could just do that on a lark and charging batteries tends to hamper that process the same way that like you know waiting for your water bb orbs to swell up hampers the process so this is the first manual spira and the jokes write themselves right and i saw my friend andrew over at gizmodo made an article and he was like this amazing water blaster is now pump action it's manually powered and and, and all the comments from the community were just like duh, duh that's what water blasters are bro like major pumping required. So it's kind of funny because on one level you could be like, they made a water blaster. How impressive could it be? After all, the thing that makes them special is this water bullet technology, this autofill technology, this super resilient electronic components that makes a very comfortable, very automatic shooting system. But, you know, leave it up to German engineering uh, to do something special with less. And so we've got a QR code for a video. We have here saying dip the Spira LX into tap water pump by extending and retracting the back handle, stop pumping as soon as the indicator within the tactical display stops moving upward. So it's got some sort of pressure gauge back here. They're calling that the tactical display. And then it says, before the water fight starts, make sure that the back handle is fully retracted. So the back handle is gonna become a stock. There's also warning information on here saying, warning, this is a powerful water blaster, which, you know, you love to see it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the team blue one just to throw you guys for a loop. I'm team red, but I'm going to keep team red dry and team blue is probably going to go home with one of my coworkers so that they can enjoy it and I won't have to feel as guilty when I ambush them in a water war. So we've got the instructions, but I think that the box does a really good job of explaining it. This is also the lowest, I guess, premium packaging uh, that I've seen in a Spira product. Normally the Spira products show up in like really crisp, really clean white boxes with a lot of uh, stuff going on, either as a cough saving measure or an environmental thing this seems to be a low waste uh fully recyclable product and i actually really like that there's no like zip ties or anything since these are shipped directly to the consumer you know you open up the box there's the box you pull the product out it's good to go so we've got and there we are there's the pump uh the pump actually has pretty good torsional strength here it's got a guide up top you can see how that's going to work like that then you know obviously when you're ready to battle you're going to use it as a stock as a stock it's not bad it's a little rounded here, and that roundness that makes it a great grip like this makes it, 
you know, pretty, pretty slippery uh, on your shoulder. That said, at least as a, you know, male type humanoid, uh, I don't think that I'd ever be in a water blaster battle wearing a shirt. So I'm assuming wet plastic on wet flesh would stick pretty handily. So I can see that being good. Other than that, it's got all the great ergonomics of the Spira 2. It's got a good built-in foregrip. It looks like it's inflow and outtake. Uh, so it's barrel and then it's intake nozzle are exactly where you'd want them to be. This gauge over here is a 0%, a 50%, and 100%. I'm assuming that's just for overall capacity. And then you've got, that's interesting. This is a long, heavy trigger pull that's clearly doing two actions. I don't know what the first action is, but the second action is obviously click, and that's gonna be releasing some sort of valve under pressure. I can only imagine that the first action is like opening up a fill portion so that this still delivers, you know, uh, single blast shots. And that's sort of what it's saying here is that this is going to have single blast, et cetera. This is also Spyro's first product to be under $100, but that is officially like five minutes of talking about the history of the product and what I think is neat about the product. It's the same clean industrial design that they've had on everything. This is remarkably smooth for being what it is. There's no snagging or catching on this sort of guide rail here that makes pumping easier. Uh, the only thing to do is take it outside, dip it in some clean tap water, and put some shots down range. Let's go. All right, so we're out here with the Spira LX. Like I said, we intentionally chose the blue one. Uh, we're actually using our hydro dipping tank. The water is super clean. The tank is very dirty. That's how hydrographics works. We're going to dip in like this. And then you should be able to detect we are slowly not only filling the product, but also pressurizing up. It's about the same speed as doing a regular Spira. So we're somewhere in the 50% range there, you can tell. Let's take it up all the way. And I think that all we're doing right now, so there's definitely an OPRV that's taking no more water. Uh, all we were doing there is filling the blaster. I don't think that we were necessarily pressurizing it. Maybe we were, but it seems like we were just loading the tube. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's fire downrange. I just don't think that we're gonna get an FPS reading off of water, even if it is a bullet and not a stream. But again, dual stage trigger, large enough that you can comfortably fit two fingers on it, which again, being as long a trigger pull as it is, you might want to, who knows? Let's uh, shoulder. Well, that was, that was surprising. Uh, could you guys, I don't know if you could see that. I'm gonna not shoulder it. I want you guys to just look at the back end of the blaster and see if you get a, if you could see the recoil that I just felt. You guys catch that? It's like definitely, it pops back a little bit. So those shots, those four shots took us down to about 75. I don't know if we measure from the back plunger or the front, but we're getting pretty normal Spira performance out of it. I mean, that's, you know, a solid blast. If we go over here, try not to get jinx wet. We're, yeah, you guys can even see as it goes through the leaf pattern here, like how the, uh, the water bullet sort of breaks. And on one fill, I'm getting plenty of shots, whatever this mechanism is. And it's definitely the back of the plunger that you measure from, because I'm nowhere close to, I'm, I'm almost empty, but I'm not one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's about where we just sort of puttered out. But uh, I'm pretty impressed. This is a, uh, it's very similar to the electronic performance. And, you know, it's accomplishing that with the force of, of just the trigger pull. So, you know, definitely, Definitely not a lesser product by any means, other than maybe like if you don't like the pumping action to fill as much as you would like just setting it in the water and using the compressor. But the really neat thing about it is nobody's forcing you to take the manual option, right? I mean, the Spyro 2 is still available on the website. It's still easily affordable for a high-end product. I mean, high-end Nerf products have gotten to the point where they can be you know, a thousand dollars. And this definitely isn't at that level quite yet. I mean, we're at the, oh my goodness. I forgot that I put all the darts in there. Uh -huh. Well, luckily this, uh, this generic matter hackers box is gonna be uh, our victim for. Uh, 
and it's accurate as all get out up to its, I guess, effective range, which if you, if you look, I mean, the box is completely waterlogged at this point, but the box is about 20 feet away and you can hit it every time. Uh, beyond that, you could get about not much more than that. The LX shoots about 25 feet. You can see that these sort of missed out long before they hit the fence. So this is your CQB option. I wanna say the other Spires have a slightly longer range, or maybe it's just a more concentrated blast, which allows them to go further before they disperse. But I mean, overall, really cool, really novel to see them playing outside of their wheelhouse doing something like a manual once they've done so many electronic options in the past. I dig it, I think that it's really cool. I also, like I said, I'm a big fan of elements of play that don't require waiting or charging. So you don't have to worry like, oh man, we haven't charged the Spyrus since last summer. Like these you could just grab, which is pretty cool. And also, I mean, the lower price point is not something to scoff at. You could get more Spyra LXs than you could Spyra 2s. And that just means that you could play with more people or have larger scale water battles, whether you're doing that on a college campus, church group, military base, pick your poison. I think the Spira is a super exciting product. I'm excited to see that they're still innovating in different ways and they're not explicitly locked into going up and only up because the more you go up, the more expensive you get and the less people you can reach. Uh, I think that this opens up Spira to a different buying demographic under $100 and in doing so, we'll let other people see kinda why I like them so much. So that's just my take. I'd love to see what you guys think about it. Is it still just a really expensive water gun to you or do you think that like a relatively novel water bullet blaster is different than your traditional kind of pump and stream uh, soaker style. Also just the design is really solid. It feels like an adult blaster as opposed to a toy toy, which is, you know, my jam. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope you enjoyed. I've got one more secret message from Spira coming up. Alrighty guys, so I hope you enjoyed that review of the Spira LX. This is the Spira 2 that I kept referencing, but it's not a normal Spira 2. This is a single package Spira 2, and it is one of, I think, 24 of these. So Spira had an incredibly limited run of Spira 2s done, and I really wish that they had made more of these because I think that this really shows a lot of the STEM innovation in their company. But I'm gonna tell you what it is. They sent over a couple of these and this one I'm giving away. So I'm gonna do a community tab post at the same time as I drop this video. Go over there, leave me a kind comment, tell me something cool in German. I don't know, I'm gonna pick a comment at random and I'm going to send this over to them. Preferably somebody from this hemisphere so that I don't have to pay an exorbitant amount of shipping. But uh, this is a special edition of the Spira 2. It comes with this really cool little black notebook that says on it, Urkunde. I don't know what that means. Uh, somebody translate, please. And it says, Dear Valued Spira Enthusiast, we hereby present you one of our strictly limited Spira 2 Genesis units as a sign of appreciation for your support of Spira. One of these limited transparent units were produced and carefully assembled for our greatest fans. So what this does is this showcases everything that I like about Spira from an engineering perspective, in a clear plastic shell. Other than that, it's a Spira 2. You've seen my video on it, but this shows exactly how it works in transparent detail. It really gives you an idea for how much thought was put into this. It shows you how waterproof everything is. You can see the battery here, the water reservoir trapped in its bladder, this mechanism here, and then up here is the nozzle complete with its dump valve. You can see how the switch works going forward and going back. I mean, I just really think that this is such a cool showcase of the, uh, the Spira 2 and what makes it really, really gnarly. And they're too cool for me to keep both of them. So uh, I'm gonna keep the one that came in a red box. I think that that's only fair, but I'm gonna give away this blue one to somebody on my community tab, let's say in seven days time. So I'll give you a whole week to leave me a kind comment and then I'll pick one at random and I'll send it off. But I had to show you this. This is such a cool sneak peek. There's a clear Spira and it's something that I wish more and more companies would do. It's got serious 90s nostalgia flavor. It definitely reminds me of the Sonic series in a way and especially for a product that's so innovative from a technology perspective, getting to see that technology in action is just really, really special. So uh, I hope you guys think this is as cool as I do. I hope you guys interact with that community tab post. And I'm just really grateful that Spyrus sent one over for me and one to give away to one of my fans. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy these soaker videos occasionally. And as always, much love, blast on, drag out.